Hey everyone, welcome to Beach Investing. I'm your host, Andre Angelkovsky. Today we have a very special guest. Her name is Elaine Page. How are you, uh, Elaine? <laughs> Great. Uh, Elaine, uh, you are from Page Paralegal. Yes. Who specializes in landlord and tenant matters. Yes. We don't want to call you, uh, you know, the tenant terminator or anything, because you're not. <laughs> right. You you help people resolve issues when it comes to landlord and tenant matters. And. Yeah, I find that it's much easier to work with people to, to resolution than to come heavy-handed because uh, tenants are in possession of your property. If you're too heavy-handed with them, they'll damage your property. Yeah, that's not a good thing. We don't yes, want that. We don't want that. So, uh, tell, tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, your what your experience is. Okay. I'm a paralegal licensed with the Law Society of Upper Canada and I am specializing in landlord and tenant law and small claims court. Um, so primarily I work for landlords helping them deal with their many, many tenant issues and I've been doing it for about 20 years and I've dealt with anything and everything imaginable over those 20 years. Alright, so you have quite a bit of experience. I do. Uh, so what I like to share with my viewers today is I want to I want to kind of give them a little wake up call. What do landlords do today that they think they can do, but they really are not supposed to do? Okay. So many landlords still today are asking for security deposits well beyond what is legally allowed, and they think that if they can frame it as something else, that it is okay. Um, typically, we see you know furniture leases or something of that ilk, the fact of the matter remains is that you can only take the first and last month's rent as a deposit and, and however you frame it, that if it's beyond that, it's illegal. Okay. So that's the well, first one. Okay. Um, the second one is that landlords often get very frustrated that their tenants haven't paid their rent, so they do things like shutting off the power and turning off the water and, and generally trying to harass their tenants. These types of activities are hugely fineable offenses at the Landlord and Tenant Board and you could be looking at fines of twenty-five to fifty thousand um, dollars. So that's a biggie. And I think one of the biggest problems we have with small landlords is that they believe that, like condominiums for example, they believe that if they enter into a yearly tenancy agreement, once that year is up the tenant must leave and that is just not the case. So that what happens after the year? It becomes a month-to-month -month tenancy and uh, there's only very specific grounds on which you can evict the tenant. Okay. Uh, Want to name one of those um, uh, sort of cases where you can give them notice? or um, You can give them notice if you require it to use yourself and if you've previously lived there. Okay. So that would be one. Okay, so now I know we, we, we the, the, the Tenancy Act is very in favor of tenants. And so we gave a lot of examples of what landlords can't do, but how about tenants? Come on, like there's got to be things that tenants do that they, they shouldn't be doing. Yes, yes many. <laughs> so um, the biggest one, there's this, this idea, and it stems from I think back in the 70s when it was probably true, that a tenant can't be evicted in the winter time. So what ends up happening is uh, they don't pay their rent or they act in, in appropriate ways, thinking they have the security of tenancy when in fact they don't. Interesting point. Um, so even if they're a single mom with a, with a little baby? That's correct. They can still be evicted at any time of the year if they go through the proper procedure. Okay. Uh, another thing that tenants think that they can do is completely renovate a unit. So we've had situations where they've painted in wild colors. Um, which, you know, they may be nice, but it's not the white walls that they came in with. We've had situations where tenants have knocked down walls, redone the bathrooms, redone the kitchens. They're not allowed to do that. No way? No. But, Absolutely But not. Th th those sound like good things. Like, I, I don't mind if they're improving the value of the house. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, okay. Well, unfortunately, mm -hmm. what a tenant might choose to put in a kitchen may not be what you would choose to of put course. in yep. a kitchen. And <laughs> it, it's a problem. Um, they also fail to give uh, landlords notice and access, so they'll complain about uh, a maintenance issue and they'll go ahead and hire their own people, they won't give the landlord an opportunity um, to, to correct an issue and then they decide uh, that they, they're going to deduct the amount they paid for 
you know, the, the plumber or what have you against their rent, which you can't do. You have to give the landlord the opportunity to, to do a repair. And so we get a lot of cases where people are seeking thousands and thousands of dollars for items that the landlord had no knowledge of. Interesting. I mean, that's, those are all really, really valid points. Thank you. I'm, I'm a little kind of like, whoa, really? Like, yeah. But thank you. And um, uh, if, if uh, I'll be putting your uh, contact info in the, below the blog. Uh, yeah. So thank you so much for sharing your information. Okay. We're going to have a presentation tonight, so I look forward to it. Thank you so much, Elaine. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Click.